Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's time for game number two of this best of three. It's Orange Esports versus LGD China. Yesterday, we saw LGD International take down Invictus Gaming. They avenged themselves for the G League Season 2 Finals loss. They suffered at IG's hands, and they have moved forward through this round of the playoffs. Can LGD China join their international brethren? That's what we're about to find out. With that all out of the way, we're going to jump right into the lobby for game number two. The draft is underway. Winter, of course, joining me once again for the cast. Wow, that was such an impressive first game, I have to say. You were, uh, during the break, Winter was just messaging me on Skype saying, LGD, wow, Imba, what the hell? How do you beat this team? Director 8, can I have your babies? Well, he didn't say that last, <laughs> that last part, but I'm sure Zhao Ji is saying that after that game. My goodness, what a performance. Yeah, the, the Beastmaster was definitely the MVP of the last game, without doubt. I do like the fact that LGD has banned Visage. Because Orange is 12 and 1 you, with this hero. You don't go against the stats, LD. 13 to 1 message. Every team needs a stats, man. <laughs> uh, even LGD. And this is where. I I'm actually curious, Winter. Do you know anything about the arrangement with Long DD for that team? I'm not really. Not really sure about it. But for what, what I can tell you now is I'm, I'm worried for Orange because they gave up the Ducks here to LGD again. Yeah, well, I'm just thinking maybe Long DD is sort of that X factor for this team as the coach. Can, can he stand behind the players? I don't think so, right? Not during the games, but it would just be more in terms of preparing for matches. Because if you look at pretty much any other competitive sport, coaches are yeah. just sort of a factor. Coaches of life. are the some of the game's deciding factors. Right, because if you're on the team, you get that tunnel vision, right? You're kind of caught up in the moment. Even if you're a captain, you study replays. It can be hard to kind of separate yourself and your yeah. emotions. As especially if you're orange and you took a, such a devastating loss the last game. It was, If you have someone just to come over and tell you what went wrong in the game, it would have been so much better for the team. And I imagine if they, if they don't do it at the event, they can certainly do it from day to day. But with all that being said, that's just sort of idle speculation and curiosity for yeah. me. For, for now, Orange has their, one of their favorite duo supports, Shadow Demon Sanking. A classic combo and a very aggressive combo. Orange, they love to run this with the Windrunner in a tri lane. The problem is they can't get the Windrunner. It, they mostly run it with Lash Rock as the position tree, this combo. Because yeah. it's much stronger. Yeah, with the it's, it's uh, I mean, you have, you have a much better follow up yeah. support. If LGD understands that, I mean, if they know about this, they would ban the Windrunner plus the Lash Rock. And then Orange is going to be not in a pickle, but they'll be taken out of their comfort zone for sure. Yeah, true. Because if you're if you're up against the Darkseer, I mean, if you if you don't if you run a defensive tri lane, he just goes to jungle, and he gets a lot of golden experience out of the jungle. He can be in the lane if he wants, but against Seeing King Shadow Demon plus one, it can be difficult. If you run an offensive tri lane and you have a strong solo like an anti mage or a lone druid, even a gyrocopter, you can maybe shut down the Darkseer and shut down their farmer, or at least trade with the Darkseer and shut down their farmer, but. If they go this way, they'll trade with the carry, and Darkseer will get farm in the jungle. If they run the defensive tri lane, and they might be forced into that if they can't get their hands on the Windrunner. Because they, they might run a defensive tri lane if they don't get the last truck as well. Then they would. I think we'll probably just start with pulling creeps for the first two or three minutes, then proceed on to their smoke ganks. And the question is, will it work? Now, uh, Xiao8, yeah. as much as we were, we were praising his fantastic item to selection, the team's overall movement, he did get caught out a few times last game, and it's entirely possible he could overextend yeah, it's, mid. It's, it's hard to play, play a totally perfect game, but overall he did very well the game, the last game. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just reading the stream chat. Oh, it's good to have it back on the monitor, but that's neither here nor there. LGD Gaming, they've got that fourth ban available. What do you ban here? You mentioned the Lash Rack. Lash Rack, yeah, definitely Lash Rack. Okay, if, let's say they don't ban that. What would be the next hero you want to get rid of? Um... Probably the Gyro, but they, if they can pick up the Gyro for themselves, it's going to be a good set of heroes with a vacuum into the cooldown as well. And they do have the first pick coming out of this stage, so if they if they yeah. leave Gyro in the pool, they can slap him up. Uh, they don't want the Obsidian Destroyer, the Outworld Destroyer. Mushi getting more respect. I'm actually, in, you know, Winter, I'm actually interested teams ban Batrider against Orange because I feel like as amazing of a mid player as Mushi is, I think Batrider is one of his worst mids. Shots by it. Uh, he's a fantastic. <laughs> he's not a bad bat rider. It's just compared to his other solos. So, so you're saying you should a team should purposely give them the bat rider? I well, I guess the question is maybe they would try and run Ohio on it and just get greedy and run him in the jungle or something like that. But 
I think if you put Mushi on bat, he just doesn't get as much done as he does well, on other heroes. Yeah, I, I understand. It doesn't suit his flair as well as playstyle, but LGD is going to show them the true ways of the anti mage. And Whether will they be successful or not? Only time will tell. And it's a bold pick, because they do it against a Shadow Demon, which often can be the bane of the anti mage's existence. No fear here. <laughs> no problem, BKBs. We'll see. There's Demonic Purge available. What is Mushi going to play this game? Again, I I feel like something like a Puck would be so great. I think this game they would opt for going for the TA, Templar Assassin, because TA is very good against Anti-Mage. Although he might have some trouble from the Iron Shell, but I think there's a possibility they will still go for the TA, because how well TA deals with Anti-Mage. I guess the one concern is you're up against Darkseer. And yeah, but Sand King TA, that's a lot of killing power with those two heroes. It, it gives Orange a really potent mid game, that's for sure. They might, they might not pick it here right now yet. Maybe some, they will pick an uh, offlane hero first for Ohio. The other nice thing is if we see something like a Shao Wei Beastmaster mid or his melee mm -hmm. lane controller. I think it's going to be a Furian or oh, Lesra. Still Lesra. Well, it's you... going to be the tri lane. I think you might know your RNG sports here. <laughs> <laughs> no surprises, really. They go for the less track. They now have it's this. Gonna be that lane. If the one issue is they can't really smoke with this tri lane, because if they do, they're leaving a less track. Yeah, I'm not going to smoke in this tri lane. They're gonna sit in the lane and make sure Sila doesn't farm. You know what happens when Sila farm? Well, it, does LGD just try to dodge this tri lane? Then maybe they send anti mage bottom. LGD, LGD will fight. They'll f they will fight with the Jakiro and Rubik. Orange. Defensive supports. Yeah, strong defensive supports. Particularly the Rubik here will be crucial. If they go in, they disrupt someone, you can just lift. Uh, I ideally, the Sand King, maybe the Leshrac, and then look to disengage. And LGD is a team which they are so confident in their defensive tri lane. Do you want to come challenge my lane? They'll just fight with you. They won't do something like they start a smoke gang bottom or hide behind the off lane hero at bottom and gang bottom. They, they won't do stuff like that. They will just fight you head on. I would, you know, I would really love to see like a puck for Mushi and then a gyrocopter for KYXY. I Somehow I feel they're gonna pick TA. My gut is telling me they're gonna pick TA. It it's certainly a Mushi hero, so it would not surprise me in the slightest. I'd be excited to see it. Tinker. They'll go no. Tinker. Wow. Uh, it's this. I think this is a safe lane hero, Tinker, probably. And who's gonna go mid then? It, it almost has to um, be a TA. It's I either uh, the, the uh, KYXY can play Leshrac or Tinker, but according to their recent games, I think. Ohio will play the last rock, then Tinker will be played by KYXY because Mushi doesn't play Tinker. So the last hero is Mushi's hero. And you look at Orange, they have all spell damage right now. I feel they really need some physical damage to do with the anti mage if this game TA, TA, TA. Physical damage, solo mid. That can go with mid. It's pretty much TA. That's all the that's the only option. I can't actually think of another solo mid that does big physical damage. It could have been Lone Druid. He, maybe they'll pick SF. Maybe. Oh. Yeah, SF is also the other possibility. SF or TA. Well, you don't know what... I guess the only concern is you don't know what LGD... Well, they get the last pick, so they'll see what LGD solo mid mm. is, and then they can react accordingly. This is going to be very interesting. There is still a gyro but in the pool. I'm trying to go inside their brains to see what else they have in mind. You know, I wouldn't mind a gyro this game, either. I, I still think it'd be a uh, pretty strong I, pick. I don't think they'll pick gyro. I don't think so. I highly doubt so. Okay. No. Well, they'll ban Clockwork LGD for LGD, which... I, I suppose Xiaowei does take mid on occasion. There's Kunkka also banned out. Uh, I'm not sure what I else think, there is. There's a I think it's either, I, either the TA or the SF. I don't think they'll pick anything else other than the two. For orange, you mean? Yeah. Well, they definitely need physical damage. That much is clear. As for LGD, Beastmaster's in the pool. Yeah, Beastmaster again, maybe? That's kind of the obvious choice. Is there anything else you can think of that they might go for here? I uh, don't think so. Magnus, but I don't think so. It's either the Puck or the Beastmaster, that's the most ideal pick. Wow, that hero is still in the pool. Seriously? Oh man, against Tinker of all heroes. Oh my god, yeah. Even, even we missed it, Winter, we didn't even realize it. Yeah, and Nyx Assassin is so good against Shadow Demon, Lestra and Tinker. Such a good pick. It's good against all four of these heroes, they're all food for him. Maybe not Sankade, <laughs> but the others definitely are. Oh god. Taste, taste, tasty food for the big cockroach. The way you said that just cracks me up. <laughs> oh, it's so good. RNG Sports, what what are they going to pull out of the hat here? TA, come on. Mushi, what's it going to be, my friend? Extinct. Is Extinct Eight doing seconds. the drafting, or is he just in the draft or something? Yeah, Extinct is doing the drafting. Okay, because I know Mushi was for a while. Two seconds, one second. TA, there you go. Winter called it. 
Well, Winter, you might as well play for Ard since you apparently can predict their every single pick. My goodness. Maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they need you as their captain, but they'll have to pay for your well, services. It feels like I'm drafting the heroes for them already. Maybe you're on the phone with Extinct right now and secretly feeding him information through the broadcast. <laughs> we're gonna have to get a, we're gonna have to get a camera shot of the DSL if we can to make sure you're not up to anything malicious. But with that being said, guys, it's a best of three and LGD China. They're the big dogs. They're back in form oh, and they're leading. Ohio is playing the TA, LD. No swap. Mo Moshi is playing. Hey, what? What? Oh, is he doing a solo mid Sand King? No, Sand King is solo mid. Yes, Mushi has done this. He loves to run the Sand King mid against. Well, is he going uh, mid? He's got no, 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 protection. No. Sand King is not solo mid. Ohio went for the eco build. One tango, three bunch. Wow. Well, let's introduce the players. Then we can talk about these very unusual lanes, to say the least. For LGD China, they lead the best of 3 1 to 0. They, of course, are your defending G1 League Season 4 champions, your G1 League Season 5 second place team. They have been one of the top dogs in China for a long time. International 2, third place team. And more importantly, they're back in form. They're looking scary now. DDC on the Rubik. Silar will be handling the anti mage. Yao. On the Dark Seer, we'll have Xiao Wei taking over the role of the Nyx and heading solo mid and could have a really big game. Didi on the Twin Headed Dragon. And on the other side, Winter, we've got the Malaysian Sensations, your countrymen, RNG Sports. Yes, my countrymen. Axting on the Lashra, Matt on the Shadow Demon, Mushi on the Sun King, which means farming Sun King. That's not what we see every day. And can I expect us? The Thinker should probably be the safe lane Thinker and Ohio on the solo mid TA. I haven't actually seen this matchup recently, but it's going to be a Darks... Well, well, you might have a skirmish over the zero minute rune. Wow. Are they changing the lanes? Yeah, Darks is going middle and NA is going bottom against the Tinker. Oh my god, the Tinker's not going to like this. I don't know if... Wow, Nick's... this is this is such good lane placements by LGD. Uh, and then that leaves our tri lane, which is going to be the very defensive tri lane you mentioned. Twin Headed yeah. Dragon, Rubik, and Anti Mage. Hard lane to find a kill. It's very difficult to get a kill. So my question for you, Winter, is uh, do you give LGD just the outright edge in these lanes? Or do you think Orange can still do pretty well? I think Orange can still do pretty well. They are very good in the laning phase. They can have the inferior matchup but still win the lanes. They're thinking about going in on Silar. They'll start off with the Split Earth. Why are they running oh. the Sand King as a farmer in an offensive tri lane? Is it for Caustic Finale? Uh, just mm, for an extra stun? They want to give the Sand King the item... Probably a faster dagger, and but I think usually what they would do is they farm the last rock. But in this situation, because the enemy team has Nyx Assassin and Anti Mage, it's very very dangerous if you farm a last rock. Your last rock is just like what you said, food. Yeah, Sand King's got mobility, and I mean you mentioned the early dagger. Yeah. Maybe that's it, because if he gets an early dagger, heroes that want to sit back like Rubik, yeah, Twin Headed and, Dragon, and Mushi loves to play Sand King. It's just that people don't know that. Meanwhile, middle lane, Yao is creep skipping the wow. mid lane. This is really? rather bold play. That's not his tower, man. And I, I imagine he'll farm the small camp as well when he gets the opportunity. Maybe not yet. He'll put an Ion Shell on the creep. Unfortunately, the tower chooses to focus that creep, so it will die quickly. And takes a yeah. lot of splash damage here from Ohio. He oh, took a lot top of lane, damage. top lane. Oh, thought we were going to have a skirmish. Made me nervous. Just a dual breath to start things off. Mushi thinking about going in here on Silar. The one thing is they're running a Shadow Demon tri lane, but Silar has not skilled I Mana I think Silar might, might even skill his uh, spell shield right now. Not skipping the mana break. Yeah, there's, there's no reason to get the, the mana break. Like, they're not going to find kills in this tri lane unless Orange screw up. So he's better off just not taking it and farming. And, I mean, maybe even leave a skill point reserve if he wants. Yeah, if you look at the other lanes, I think so far... Yeah, both pretty even, both the solo lanes. And bottom lane, that was the one matchup where you said KYXY would not be happy. But end of the day, he is yeah. still a 600 range hero against, or sorry, 500 range yeah, he, hero the against mana the burn, The mana burn nerf really hurt the level 1 mana burn a lot. Obviously, KYXY is still going to struggle to consistently a full mana, but he can just auto attack the Nyx and at least for the early levels will be okay there. The one yeah. concern is he can't really keep him out of oh. experience range. Yeah, he's actually losing a lot of last hits in middle. It seems like the creep skipping is, did not really yeah, pan it, out. It didn't really help him a lot. He took so much damage. And now we're looking at an 11-5 Templar Assassin. Mushi also, he's gone Caustic Finale. He's not going to take any points in Sandstorm. Yeah. Constant harassment on Silar. I, I think it's a good good decision because Sandstorm doesn't help him too much. Wow. 
very manly play. I was actually looking at mid where there's also a bit of a dive going on, but... Yeah, if the Jakiro was level 2, I think they would have potentially gotten that kill. Because uh, Xting was in a bad position. I really like how Silar isn't skilling Mana Break here. And he's also just holding a point of reserve. He, he, he won't skill his Mana Break, I think. He's gonna take either stats or spell shield. Maybe if he can find a kill, but otherwise I wouldn't see him doing it. He has one reserve skill point, yeah. Yeah, and he's holding on to it for right now. Smart play by him. Mushi, well, he's about to hit level 3. He's a little bit close to the creeps, but uh, should be okay. It's, it's going to be the same situation as the last game. All the last hits, oh, Mushi's going to get lifted. They'll lift him up, but he's not the one oh, you want to go on. Not when he's got Burrow Strike. In fact, gonna get, there's your disruption. Blood, Splitter's yeah. there. It's going to connect. DDC blood. could be in trouble. Burrow Strike over the top. First blood. Claimed and without oh, mana break. Lose the as well, oh, he's in trouble. Ice Path catches out three. Didi on the run. Cornered oh. at the shop. He'll salve up immediately. It gets cancelled. And now a splitter. It's actually going to miss, but Didi tangoing deeper and deeper, most likely into his own demise. He'll be going down. Extinct. Double kill for net. And oh, RNG so Sports off to a hot start here in game two. Yeah, and they're winning the CS battle as well in the, both the solo lanes. And now they're passing the magic bottle around the world. And Yao probably going to bottle crow from the mid lane which is a shorter trip. This gives Mushi his boots, it gives the Marina Basilius, very important in Trilane versus Trilane. And everybody else should have boots and maybe even a magic stick coming soon. That was, they just won the Trilane completely off of that fight. Yeah, it was just, I guess DDC was just all, all eager to try and make something happen, but I felt that they, they could have just sit back and play passive and just farm and wait for Orange to engage on them. Uh-oh, bottles just arrived for Xiao Wei. He's looking for a stun bottom lane. But KYXY with the boots up oh. already. We'll be able KYXY to KYXY is so low already. And he's really not having a good time in this lane. Farming well, 22 and 10, but being completely zoned out of the lane by Xiao8. Yeah, the mana burn is just so hard to deal with. Let's see, does he have a bottle coming? He does. Bottle's there. Uh, look, look at Xiao8, it's just completely chasing out. Oh, they're gonna go in DDC. They've disrupted him, but a beautiful telekinesis done. Might be enough to turn this around. DDC is low. He'll go down. Silar giving chase, but just cannot seem to find the kill. And the turnaround may come with a Mushi Burrow Strike. Cooling down soon. They won't engage. Uh, actually, I, I was actually quite surprised that uh, Silar didn't try to mana burn the Sanking. Because the Sanking stun wasn't ready yet. Oh, beautiful play by Mushi. Burrow Striking, stealing the creeps. Would have liked to see him apply Caustic Finale debuff to one of those first, but he's they're doing great in this trailing. Already up to 2150 yeah. net worth. And he's going to have Arcane Boots soon, which is going to be huge for this trailing. If they get a very good start. Their heroes will be able to carry through the mid game with item advantage and level advantage. If the game was even or if anti mage was ahead, I yeah. think Orange would be worried, but they're They'll doing be really in well. A lot of trouble. It's sort of like the similar situation of the last game where LGD's heroes are strong in the mid game, weaker in the early phase. If they if they escape the early phase without much deficit, then Orange will be in a lot of trouble. Uh, Silar is going to be salving up and up to 900 gold so he can work towards that next item soon. Mushi, Arcane Boots are up now. That's the big item. They can start to just spam nukes on the creep wave, push the wave, contest the pull, and really look to shut uh, LGD's farm down. Xiao8 is there waiting for KYXY. <laughs> Under cover of Vendetta he is, but KYXY just hiding up the tower. Oh no. KYXY, don't do it. Well, it looks like he's going to dodge oh. that Vendetta window. And oh, LD, I just, I just realized. Look at, look at the Nyx Assassin's last hit and the Tinker. So big difference. Yeah, wow. it's, he is at the end of the day a 500 range hero against the melee. Wow. But still, very impressive I, play. I, I didn't expect him to lose so badly. I, I, the one thing I'll say about KYXY is I feel like his item selections and skill builds are not always the best, but just in terms of his mechanics in yeah, the lane, he is winning. Very good, he's a very good solo player. Yeah, he is winning all of his matchups, at least from what I've seen. Well, wow, I didn't expect him to dominate his lane so badly. Well, maybe the mana burn nerf that you mentioned is having a bigger effect than we thought. They'll go in now on Silar. Disrupt him to start. Burrow Strike not there. Beautiful telekinesis by DDC. It'll allow them to disengage. Ouch. The disruption illusions mana burning his teammates. <laughs> oh, Tinker almost died. Look at the KYX. He's still standing in the lane with one B stick of life. Uh, even pop the soul rain there, I guess, to get off an additional nuke. They're going to go again on DDC. No. Waiting. Just auto attacks. They really want to dive this, but... And, and here, they... here comes the TA. Oh, oh. God. 
Ogor, he's not going for the power trades, not maybe maybe the drums. We'll see, but Net's gonna loop around now, and it could be trouble for Silar. Oh, we'll start on him. Disrupt, soul catcher as well. No burrow oh. again. The lift by DDC, but it doesn't matter. They still catch Silar. His own illusions, his own worst enemy, and now the chase is on. DDC isolated. Oh, He'll be next in line, and this all comes to fruition because Xiao Eight did not have mana, did not have a teleport scroll. Perfect time for LGD to go. Dark Sea rotates what, top. This is what happens when the director can't help his team. You put him off lane, you don't give him rune control, and it's, they suffer a bit. It's also just Dark Seer mid doesn't really do yeah. much in these situations. Look at the CS of the TA. He totally ignored the Dark Seer in the lane, I would say, the Iron Shell. You know, there was, you remember before Templar Session actually got nerfed, when they, they re increased the, the mana cost of Cyblades yeah, I, uh, over Fracture rather, and I think they actually nerfed the AoE. Oh, they're gonna go on top. Mushi taking tower shots to the face. Tower will go down, denied by the so denied by Siler. Now Xiao Wei comes in. Impale's gonna wow. catch two. Xiao Wei looking to turn this one around. He'll find two. Oh. He'll find three. And as soon as we question the director, he as changes soon the as script he on us. Question the director. The director shows up, gets three kills. How about that? Now let's be fair. Orange horribly overstayed their welcome there. They were all yeah, low. They, they tried. They were too greedy. They tried to get a tower. The tower was so low. As much as we want to praise the director, that was also just really questionable play by Orange. Yeah. And and I always remember Mushi telling us never get greedy with towers. I guess he he's gonna be very mad at that. Well, it's 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 what it's something that I think a lot of players will understand and agree with, but. It's another thing to actually live by it. When the tower's low, like just one more hit, one more round of auto attacks, we'll get you the always, tower. You always say, I'm gonna farm just this one more creep and then show up next to you. Or you're gonna say that, oh, the tower's last hit, I'm gonna get a tower and escape. But as soon as you try and get the last hit, you die. We can't back now. We can't back now. We've already committed. Now we have to go for it and now we're dead. <laughs> <laughs> we're it's, it's really difficult to have the discipline to say, guys, we can't take this tower no matter what. We're gonna die, just back off, just let him deny the tower. It's difficult sometimes. Uh, that's one of the things the burning does really well. He is not afraid hey, to mid lane, up a mid lane. tower. Yao, mid lane, will get disrupted. They have a split earth available. Trap deployed as well, but the backup could be coming, so they will retreat. And speaking of it, could be coming. Oh, Xiao it's already here. Yeah. He's here. He's always there. Goodness gracious. He's always there when, he, when the team needs him. Somebody give this he, man he an He can have 19 CS at 10 minutes, and he can still have an impact in the game. Somebody give this man an ambient because he really needs to take a nap. He's out of control right now. Shall we? He'll top rotate lane, top, top immediately right, looking for more kills. Mushi's in trouble. Mushi, he can burrow into the trees, but of course Anti-Mage can blink to follow him and he won't even be able to. He wow. burrows through Shall we? but gets off the carapace now. Wow. Pops the Sandstorm and then tries to run some more, but the Impale will follow him. He'll go down and it'll go down to Silar of all heroes. That is not what the Doctor ordered. And this is what the Director ordered, a defensive ice path to try and keep him safe, but it won't be enough. The missile splash through. Tinker, Boots of Travel not up, but coming soon. And now it's Orange's turn to give chase. They've got the traps, there's no tier 1 here. But Siler lurking, along with Yao. Oh, Mech, they, want to, they want to turn this around. Mech coming soon, they'll back oh, Ohio they back in. Out. He buys out, but there's nowhere to TP to, it's a long way to chase. Doesn't matter, Ohio bites the dust. Mushi's gonna oh. respawn in a matter of seconds. Double Iron Shell doing well, LD. And now Net, self-disrupt, gonna fall. Mushi can TP in, he does have an epicenter. Can he find the opening? That's the big question. Waiting for us now. He'll burrow straight in on Silar. Goes pop, for the Epi. Pop. And oh, the Ice Path. Ice didn't Ice Path. Didn't use anything. But KYXY is going to die right before he buys his boots of travel. That's pretty disastrous. Now Mushi on the run. Ice this pop. is all falling apart for R&D oh, Sports. No. Mushi going to be next in line. The Sandstorm actually not procking the Carapace from the looks of things. And Mushi able to get away. Wow, that... He shouldn't have left the Ice... I didn't expect the Ice Path to miss. And that Mushi responds, burrows in, immediately oh. tries to epicenter. Aldi, if Mushi died there, they lost so much. They already lost a lot. They were up by 4k, now they're only up by 2. Bottom lane, no DDC. DDC. It'll probably be his turn to fall. What has he stolen? Nothing just yet, still running. He'll steal, he'll go for the steal now. It's gonna be the traps. Not- The only thing, the only thing that he steals will save him is the melt. You know, Winter, the biggest thing for me in that last fight is that Tinker TP top and died. He was getting close to his boots to travel. Uh, he was 1.5k just now. And now he's down to one. Uh, and, I, and if you look at his skill build, he's not going to get a fast boost of travel. He, he has only level one march. He opted to go for the laning, the lane dominance build, the laser. Yeah, this explains why he was so far ahead in the lane. And of course, the downside to going for an offensive I, I, I think the better way to skill the Tinker is to just to have lane dominance at the same time. A uh, good farming speed is to max your laser and the uh, march of the machines. Ignore the rocket. That's how XY plays his Tinker. I think that is a very good way of playing the Tinker. 
The thing is, rocket's not really going to help you because you have to be farming until you get your boots of travel. Yeah, true. That, that's, that's why he skills laser just to be comfortable in the lane. Then he maxes his march to farm. Well, the skill build, be it as it may, he's got to get these boots uh, you, of travel. You were talking about you, how, how much you didn't like the skill build of KYXY and his item decisions is showing again. Well, Nets maybe going to get caught out now. There's a disrupt, the Soul Catcher to follow. Mushi's going to come in, burrows through, catches two, but might be in trouble. He'll try to run out. Here comes Ohio, does a lot of damage, blows one up in a hurry, and they look to retreat out, but now Mushi isolated. Yeah. Burrow strikes cooling down. Is he going to use it defensively? Will he come back in to turn the fight for his team? Shall we? It's caught extinct, but hasn't killed him yet. Traps being detonated. Ohio just fishing for an opening. Pops the refract now. Tries to go back in. Mushi's going to burrow, catches Shall we? Brings him down. Now Ohio on the run, but he melts up. He's trying to fight this one out. The Iron Shell going to burn him down. He'll force him back for the time being. There's no Demonic Purge. There's no Disrupt. But Yao, out of options. Now an Epi being channeled on DD, but stolen by DDC. Can he use it now? Burrow cooling down. Four seconds to go. He's going to dodge away from the Ice Path, but during that time, it zones out the path of engagement, so he will be able to escape. KYXY. Good news is KYXY didn't die that time, Winter, and now he's got his boots to travel. Yeah, that's going to be a crucial item. Very, very I'm, I'm working up a sweat here, man. 10 to 8, 14 minutes in. 4K gold lead for RNG Sports. 3K experience lead. You, you know what's the lesson I learned so far? Never yeah. adopt the director. My, imagine if they had a good start. <laughs> this is with a horrible start. They lost all three yeah, lanes. They had the horrible start and this still happens. Again, this is all part of the mythos, the mystique of Director 8. And that from thence the, the legend oh was born. God. If they ever get a good start, what will happen? I don't know, man. You know what's weird is normally LGD does get a good start. They normally DK is the team that normally sort of loses the laning stage and then hangs on and finds a way to yeah, win. Yeah, but but the thing is because of the opponent they are playing against, Orange has a style where they are very dominant and very focused on the early 10-15 minutes. So that's the reason why LGD is always struggling to find a good rhythm at the start top lane. They're going to look to go on Silar. Three heroes grouped up. The trap is yeah, far they, back. They can kill him, definitely. He might, if he blinks it backwards towards the trap, he could be in trouble. Here comes Tinker. Do they even need him? No siree. Well, that's going to hurt. Orange finding the kills. Can they find more? Shall we? It's going to come in. Oh, Sentry Ward gets right, dropped yeah. right now. They disrupt him to start. There's a burrow available, but the ice path discourages future engage or further engagement. But from the backside, Extinct's going to ramble in. This is some aggressive oh, Lashrak play, he but he's got some backup. Unfortunately, he's going to walk right into Shao The Burrow catches too. No Epi follow-up. It is cooling down. They lose wow. their Lashrak. They wow. get nothing to return. Now the wall, the macro pyre comes through, and it's an absolute train wreck of a fight for RG Sports. They'll be forced to TP out. Tails tucked between their legs for those heroes that have them. They yeah, shouldn't have gotten any kills like this. I understand that Extinct wanted to join his team, but that was a very bold path of engagement. They killed the AM, and they got, if they got back, they killed the AM, so much gain. But they killed the AM, and they tried to fight, and they lost too. I think it's still okay because they killed AM, but yeah, it's not, not a great trade anymore. And you can't give LGD any breathing space, man. They'll just come up with some brand new script, and they'll kill you. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just thinking, you know, it's like you don't want to be in that late game scenario against Michael Jordan where he's going to get the last shot. You want to be so far ahead that he cannot physically shoot enough balls to win the game. And right now, LGD China, they're still well in this one. Not yeah, out of it they, by any means. They can shoot balls without, with, with one hand, seriously. <laughs> RNG Sports. Well, they might Happy look Center. to go top. They Coming could go inside Lar now. The Burrow Strike's available. If he moves forward just a bit... Mushi may look to go. go the burrow's there. Just clips him from the edge. From long range, it's going to be a split earth follow up. So much damage. See you later, anti mage. Back to the fountain, Silar. Silar continues to overextend and get picked okay. off this game. I think this is going to be the oh. game that we will never see Silar get his battle free. And now Tower gets denied mid. That's two oh, tower denies for LGD. Ice Path as well as the Iron Shell back back into an impale. Easy pickings, but now the rockets flash through. Oh, they just paid their life. Trying to get a tower and the tower got denied. Again. Once again. This time it was one okay, hero. They'll buy back. And Yao's just gonna surge up the cliff in the three. Eats a soul catcher to the face. He'll explode. Mushi no epicenter though. Remember that. Net self disrupt on the verge, on the brink of destruction and oh, death. But now gets the split earth off. Is it gonna be enough? Burrow through. Burrows everywhere. Mushi trying to do what he wow. can to turn this fight around. Is it gonna be enough? Mushi on the run. Monovoy brings him low. The urn charge ticking him down. He pops the wand. He will survive. But Ohio forced to fight it out all by his lonesome. 
can't live in the end. Mushi going back in. What a play. But feeds wow. a kill to Siler. No denies to the neutrals. Are you kidding me? My goodness. This doesn't like Siler. No, Siler. You're not going to get a kill. You're not going to have the battle for this game. Mushi, Mushi, Mushi. We've been talking about the director, but Mushi making a strong case for his own play here today. This is impressive. And that was a little bit lucky that the neutral got the last hit, but the thought was there. He wanted the deny. Oh, that that was such... I don't think they should have taken that fight. They tried to... I think they were just desperate to get more advantage, because they know that LGD is getting a lot of kills on the Knicks, and if the game goes the same way the last game went, they're going to be in trouble. So if you're RG Sports Winter, right now, you're looking at a 5k gold lead. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pushing everything too, too much. The last 10 minutes, they tried to get two towers where it got denied and they lost heroes. Two times. The top tier one and the middle tier one. So what, what should they be doing? Should they just be split pushing and farming, just find a kill and then I run? Think they have to stop trying to push things too much. Uh, slow, slow, down a, slow down a bit. They have a good advantage, but they can't afford to throw anything away. Because if they give AM the space to breathe, they're going to be in trouble later. Speaking of Silar, only a thousand gold on him right now. So still, we're looking at probably the, it might be the latest Battle Fury Silar's oh, ever got. I didn't realize Mushi doesn't have, oh. he's so far Shall from Shao, it's coming in. Oh no, his vendetta just wore off and this might be the worst moment to get caught. Oh. Never mind that, oh. vacuum followed up oh. by the impale, oh. catches three. What are we watching, LGD? Ridiculous, just filthy, absolutely disgusting. You, you, you need... Do you need him to write any more new scripts for you? <laughs> I'm telling you, it's it's all a part of the plan. That So the, the part of the plan was to get into a disadvantageous situation at the start so that the audience can get excited. Because if the game would have gone even, they would have won regardless with the script, and the game would have been a steamroll. By the way, yeah, it was a pretty good Darkseer. We saw the stats earlier, 14 and 4. And I, I, I told you he's... You get you let the LGD teams get docks here. Now bottom lane. Trouble. Shao 8 just found his way into a world of trouble. We will end up getting picked off. Almost got the solo kill and came back. The director didn't write his own script there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure some of the viewers in chat are screaming at you to stop with the director 8 stuff. But I love it, Winter. I'm all for it. <laughs> so good. Uh, well, for RNG Sports, I would like to see a gem. I feel like it's that point 20 minutes in. Maybe it's even something Mushi goes for, but... Uh, Mushi doesn't have his any items at all. He's very poor. But he has 14 assists to his name and one kill. How is that possible? One in five. That's so why unfortunate. So, why is he so poor? I don't understand. Five deaths. I guess that's it. Oh, DDC. Finally, RG Sports get a tower and their gold actually sticks. They get the yeah, full they bonus. They need the dagger. The reason of them running an aggressive training with the Sanking as a farmer is so that he can get an early dagger. But he so far still hasn't got his dagger. Well, ob objective number one was slow down Silar. They did that, but like you said, objective number objective two... Objective number two was to get a dagger on Wushi. And they have failed pretty poorly. Uh, I mean, this is 20 minutes in. Support Sand Kings get daggers by this point in the game. He'll burrow well, through. He's not going to connect. Now oh, he gets lifted up, thrown back into the tower. His home is absolutely in shambles. Uh, he's still going to oh, fall. Oh, he missed the impel. I, would, I thought they'd go for additional kills, but they all backed off because of the disrupt. In the end, they just it's, find the one. LGD, they never overextend. Who are you kidding? KYXY, he can join this bottom lane. He does have a blink dagger now, and all his nukes are maxed. Oh no, Syla has better footy. Oh no. Well, it's one of the latest battle fears you'll ever see from Sylar, and yet it still might be fast enough. It's still fast enough to win the game, I guess. If they continue at this pace. Wushi dies again. That's so bad for him. That's the last thing they want to happen. But go on the Darks here. Immediate buyback from Sandkane. Again, Mushi's going to delay his own blink to try and win this fight for his team. Burrows through. Clips too. DD to fall as well. That's a buyback for two kills. Call it worth it. Can but they get more? He had 1.1k go and now he has 600 go. It's like, it's barely worth it. I don't think that they even needed his help to get the kills. Maybe not. Now Silar driven off the top lane. KYXY. Confidently blinking forward. And now Ohio's oh, gonna push bottom lane for for oh, oh boy. Power traits better fully crank mate. This is the items you see before the AM farms a storm. Right now our tinker is leading in terms of net worth. Let's see how long that lasts. Maybe another minute or two at this rate. It's gonna be tough. Hey Strum bottle. I think, he, I think he has to go for the side of Vice build. If he goes for the Dagon build, it might be too risky. 
if you go Dagon build against Anti Mage, you are just asking to lose. I have to say, <laughs> unless Man, unless you're like you, 10k. You see a lot of weird things on KYX, like seriously. Well, I I know it is the preferred build of choice for most Southeast Asian Tinker players, but in this game up against Anti Mage, he's got a mech on the Dark Sea already. They'll probably go for a pipe at some point. If you he go Dagon, probably just tell his team that I'm gonna Dagon the Rubik and Jakiro. They're easy pickings. And then who's gonna kill the anti mage? You have you have no lockdown if he goes BKB. Oh god, that's your job. You have melt. <laughs> yeah, good luck to Ogor winning that man fight once the Manta and the BKB are out. But we will see, Winter. We will see. Haste. Need a de desolate on him as well. <laughs> Shall wait on the Prel again. To be fair, we've been talking about how poor the Sand King is. Shall wait's not doing too well himself either, sitting on yeah. very minimal items. Both the captains are. You guys farm. We'll die. You guys farm. I'll, I'll just initiate for you guys, kill them, but I die. Mushi's getting... I, I want to point out, not only is he not getting the kills, but net is 8-4-9. This is... What? <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> this is a very topsy-turvy game. They're going on Ohio now. Refraction was down. This is the moment oh, to strike. They lift gone. him up. They throw him back into a dual breath. Now vacuum, but he gets off the refraction. Maybe not, Winter. He says, I am not dead. Not, not yet. Not. Blinking forward is KYXY. Tosses in the Mushi missile. Comes. Mushi comes. Don't overextend. Mushi oh, cometh. Man. Burrow strike was stolen. Now he's on the run. That is so bad for Orange. That is the one spell you just cannot give away. Well, do you think you can't give away... You, you can give away Burrow strike over Black Hole? Or RP? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe those are equally bad, but uh, Burrow Strike has, what is it, like a 9 second cooldown? 11 second cooldown? That's ridiculous. Oh, Starts here, caught out. Invis Rune is there. Mushi's oh, trying no, to fight this. Here. Oh, if he dies again, that's going to delay his blink so oh, blink much. For you, Mushi. This is not how it's supposed to happen. Shadow Demon's supposed to die. LGD are supposed to take the sacrificial support, but instead, it's DDC burrowing through. That was an amazing meld crit. It hit all three. Is it going to be Invis enough? Coming from behind. That's that's the question. KYXY, real army right now prepare for blink prepare for trouble he'll find a pick off on the back lines and a shall wait so bad. forced to run away they killed one hero once again mushi and the one takes the top tower they're fighting 4v5 and they're winning these fights and you got to say for orange they're just this is just their uh, classic I problem said the, i said the battle for you might never come for the am but now it's like the, the dagger might never come for the psyche <laughs> And speaking of the anti mage, Silar. Yes, offering. Yep. He'll, he'll go for this, an early rush. This was rush. the build I was talking about that uh, KYX match should win the last game. You... He's gonna do rush now? Really? Oh, yeah, he can, he's gonna do rush. He has so many points and stats right now. Look at his HP. How many plus stats does he have? That is uh, seven one, levels. Two, is that seven levels six of stats. stats? I think six stats. Oh, because he's got the power treads? Uh. Wow, that's a lot of stats, Winter. Where's Bruno when we need him? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's seven, but I, this is the perfect build to go Roche. <laughs> extra yeah. damage, extra I attack speed. I thought Watch did this the last game. Wow, Iron Shell on the Roshan. Uh, this is next level. I guess they're trying to remove the spell shield. Well, wow. Roche is dropping quickly. It doesn't work that way, right? I don't, I think it was no, there. I don't think so, but uh, maybe they meant to put it on Silar. Hard to say. Either way, Roche is a big cat. Understandable if they misclick. But yeah, I don't think it works that way either. 2608, Mr. LD. Thank you. <laughs> don't type it in the stream chat, though. The Chinese, the Chinese do not like that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Luminous got yelled at for doing that in one of the other games. I guess because their stream is no delay, they're just they don't want to be and they don't want to cluttering up the the TV, but. Oh, Winter, LGD looking good now. They've stabilized in game two. They now are only trailing by 2,500 gold. What, what do you have to do to beat this team, LD? What do you have to do? I think you just have to be content with your victories. Like like you said, Orange yeah, you, could have just... They all extended too many times. They could have just killed the anti-mage top like 20 minutes ago and just... Or and, not 20, 15. And both the tier 1 towers at top and middle, they tried so hard to kill it and they paid for it. They got them denied. And, and they, both of it got denied as well. That was so bad. As much as I want to praise LGD, I do feel a lot of the way this game is developed is just Orange being greedy. I, I think it was because a lot of it, I think it's, it has to do with the mental state of the players. Where you lost the first game in that manner, it sort of affects you. Yeah, again, they won all three lanes. They thought they had the game in the bag, and then all of a sudden they didn't. So now usually, Winter... See, usually you say Team A, they lost all their lanes, GG. But against LGD, you lost all your lanes, but you, they still win. 
And that was also the beauty of their draft, was they were okay with losing their lanes. We'll, we'll see KYXY teleport top. I, I think they didn't lose the lanes bad enough. I, he'll have a Scythe of Ice in the next probably five oh, minutes. Director 8 is on the prowl. Wow. They have a gem. And he'll just... Oh, he blinks away. <laughs> he'll blink I out. I saw him. Do they really not have a gem? We're 28 minutes They have minutes a sentry in. there. He was so near to the sentry, but he blinked away at the last moment. Here comes the smoke. Orange says there's... Oh, there's a dagger on the Sand King finally. They're going to make something happen here. They're going to walk right by a dire sentry ward in a matter of seconds. This smoke gank doesn't feel like a high... Uh, a high value smoke egg to say the least, but we'll see if they can make it work. Ohio's also picked up a BKB. For RG Sports, they are uh, technically still leading in terms of gold. He Only... still doesn't have enough damage, to be honest with you, LD. This is where you need probably the Crystalis, maybe a Desolator. No, you need the manly item. <laughs> really? You think you need a Rapier now, Winter? <laughs> I'm just trolling you. I know you like the Rapier. <laughs> I do, but only what it. Uh, this is too early. That would just be throwing the game. Shall we? It's gonna oh, walk right in. Director. That's unfortunate. Smack Split Earth up. up. Center, Slam, jam. Thank you, ma'am. And shall we? It bites the dust. Well, that was pretty fortuitous. He walked right by one observer and sentry, straight up the cliff, yeah. and they drop another. And the big him. difference between this game was the, they didn't have the gem that early, and they still doesn't have they still don't have a gem. But and it's not the best hero to hold a gem because if you lose it, you are technically screwing yourself up. I, st I guess they can. I don't. The thing is, Shao will do that once, but you're not going to see him repeatedly get picked off like that. If it does, it's very yeah. rare. They need to buy more time for Sila to grow to be a big, fat anti mage. Yeah, he still he hates magic, but he's not very good at fighting it right now. He's working towards his first real combat to, item. To be honest, he's yes, he's still decent. Considered that he died four times. And considering that he's been fighting a lot more than what he wanted to. 2, 4, and 5. Silo would much rather be 0, 0, and 0 right now. <laughs> yeah, that's always the case when you see Silo. He's like 0, 0, 300 CS at 30 minutes. Yeah. GG. Well, they still have a shot. They're still... Orange not out of this. The, uh, the big thing will be the Scythe device. And it's coming fairly soon for KYXY. I feel with this, you buy yourself... I don't know. A, a decent window where if you can just find pickoffs with the Scythe device... The blink sand came, maybe a good smoking. I, I, I think he's gonna go like side of ice. I throw big Dagon probably. I don't mind he might even He might even go Bloodstone maybe. I've I, I seen him play Bloodstone before, but I don't think it's a good option. I don't mind E Blade Dagon at all. I just don't think it's a good first item against Anti Mage. But after you get the Scythe and the Blink yeah, Dagger, you can tell, go whatever tell you that want. that to X Freedom. Well, X Freedom is forgotten more about Tinker than either of us will ever learn. Director 8 is in trouble. Director 8 He's is gonna in trouble. Wa I jinxed him. I said it wouldn't walk into the trap again, but he did. And God do doggone it. He's gonna die for it. Gets caught out. Gets blown up. Well, Winter, I am... Someone Someone in the Team Liquid Live report thread said I'm reaching an artosis level of jinxing teams. Which is a basically a way of saying that the more I talk about a team and how good they are, I know, I know. the more it's likely like they are to lose. Artos is saying... Oh, the, the Zerg is going to get like some, some blah, 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 then he screwed it up. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's fair to say I've quite reached that level, because Ar Artosis has really made an art of that, but... Oh, working towards it. <laughs> as soon as you talk about how Shai won't get caught, he gets caught again. And there's your Scythe of Ice. And this is a pretty decent level of farm for KYXY. Yeah, he has a lot of kills as well, five kills. Bottom lane, Ohio's gonna lurk here. He's now up to 1800 gold, just chipping away at the creeps, slowly but surely. And we'll see, Silar just... He went Vlad, so, I mean, it does delay when he actually really wants yeah. to join the fights a bit. But Vlad help him, helps him push a lot faster and farm faster as well. You have the extra mana regen and armor. Here comes the director again. He's uh, he's unperturbed by the fact that he's just been getting picked off repeatedly. He's gonna find Extinct, catches him out in the tree line, Thank and Siler walks there. in. They're just gonna let Extinct die. Wow. And if they find Mushi, that's all right. Oh, okay, they don't find him. Just a big pile of gold, kind of hanging out. This is this is like if you were just walking down the street, a hundred dollar bill is there. Oh my it's like, has, oh great, I'll take that. He has Manta now because of that. Manta, one point six k. The clock is ticking. Scythe of Ice now up on Tinker, but they're spending precious minutes after it's been purchased. Farming and sitting back. And uh, Yao has a BKB again. 
And you mentioned that Ohio needs more damage. He's going Yasha, which is not really the most cost-effective damage I item. I think he will transition into a Desolator next, sell his magic wand. He won't complete a Mantar style, he just wants the movement speed. We'll see what he goes for. On the Dire side, they'll confidently strut out of the river, look to do a bit of de-warding. Silar clearing out the creeps, rotating towards the bottom lane soon, I imagine. Not just yet. If LGD take this game, they will move on into the next round. They'll join LGD International in advancing out of this first round of playoff matches. As for uh, RNG Sports, well, they'll drop down at that point. It's definitely a match that they, I, I believe it's not a knockout oh match. No. They might find Sila. Oh no, Sila ditches the lane I at the right moment. I believe they get knocked out of the loser's bracket, the loser of this match. I don't think they actually get knocked out of the tournament, but... Uh, obviously, the road would get harder for them. Uh, I think they they got they have to play one more game if they lose. Yeah, they're the, these are the two second place teams from the groups. the The last match, LGD and as well as uh, uh, IG were your third place teams. So that's why when they lost, they just go home. Okay, this is the next fight. That's gonna be whoever wins this fight will get the Roshan and control of the game. Well, we have a zero gold advantage right now. The game's finally uh. stabilized. This is that crucial moment. There's a blink sight device that is a very powerful and potent way to initiate. But they've yeah, got it's to gonna be strike. all about the combination. Vacuum into Ice Puff. If they get the Ice Puff, Vacuum and Impale. That's gonna be team team wipe for sure. Silar just he'll start split pushing now, up to 3.6k. And once he gets that next item, the question becomes can they kill him during a sight device? Or can they sight them again? Uh, he's gonna get a hot, I think, the next item. He'll actually teleport oh, to the base. Actually he's gonna get BKB, no, he's gonna get BKB. Yeah, he TP's home. Yeah. He needs twenty gold here. Oh, oh, sorry. No, he doesn't. So he, uh, he has wrong. BKB. Has the it's, BKB. It's a, tip, it's a typical Silo style. He TPs back home right before a fight. He has 3.9k. He buys BKB, joins the fight, wins the fight, wins the game. And they're going to continue to push the tower. Xiao Wei's going to backstab them. Do they have a gem? No gem. Just a sentry in the lane. Xiao Wei could find uh, a fantastic opening if he came from behind. Does Tinker have buyout? It's going to be very important. No buyout. Enough. No buyout. 430 gold short. And ticking down slowly but surely. Mushi in a great position in the tree line here, though. This could be huge. He's got an epi ready. Yeah. Will he start to channel it? Rockets come through, driving LGD back. This could be the moment for Ars to strike. They won't go just yet. They'll back off. They'll reset. They'll reload. That yeah. was close. That was. They went to the precipice and then they said, "Uh, uh we don't want to dive yet, but we're coming LGD soon." LGD is getting ready as well. I don't share on the anti mage getting ready to pounce with his BKB. It'll be like a cat here, and it'll be up to Mushi to declaw that cat in a hurry. Okay, well, jumps into the trees a little bit close they, to they Mushi. They know he's there. They saw that, yeah. And now they might, they might, they might drag them into Mushi. That would be the concern. Ohio's gonna muscle up. Blink, stun to start. There's your BKB immediately anti-mage. There's a defensive disruption, but I think it might be too late. The damage may be done. Mushi waiting for an epi. Mushi's hasn't found inside. it yet. He hasn't jumped. He's wasting his opportunity here. He'll oh, be forced back in the end. Be in trouble. Net's dead again. And Net's gonna okay, die. This goes Roshan. Roshan is gone. They'll TP back to the tier 1 bottom, but... Oh, wow, actually, they could be in trouble at the tier 1 bottom. Mushi's got Epi. They cannot Mushi fight this 2v5. No! Get out! They'll blink backwards, KYXY. Staggered set of blinks. This Roshan is gone. I don't think they can defend the Rosh anymore. Mushi just... He couldn't find the opening there, but the problem was his team sat there helplessly. He was trying to hit the perfect epicenter. Ended up doing nothing. No burrow strike. Uh, some, sometimes being over patient is not the not the best choice. You just have to go. I think it's where they don't have that hero that just jumps in like a like a. Well, I mean, Sanking can do it, but he is a lot of Somebody, their damage. Someone has center. to do it. Either Tinker or the Sanking. Someone has to go sacrifice himself first. Uh, the TA, she's the only way to kill the anti mage, so she can't really jump in first. And she just got caught there. To be fair, KYXY maybe. Or Ohio, a little bit overextended, but you mentioned, don't think they can fight Roche, and it looks like that's the case. LGD, Roche dropping soon, and if Orange try to fight this right now, this could go very poorly. Yeah, if they try to, they're gonna try to fight now. Impale, mana burn on net, he's thrown back into three. He's gonna drop quickly, no, a four step to turn it around. Xiao H dropping low, there's your BKB on Ohio, he gets it off this time. But Yao, under cover of his own BKB, tries to run away. The, the Manta style deployed. Oh, Epi. Epi, channeling, burrows through, catches out three. Is it enough? There's not quite enough damage yet. Silar still looking to chase this fight. Oh, Turn it around. Again. Net's in trouble. Oh, okay, and now Silar, he's going to fight Extinct as well. Two more chops and down he'll go. While that's happening, the Ice Path cleans it up. Silar finds a triple. He may even find an Ultra. Extinct on the run. And this could is, be... Is, is this where the point of the game you say you, got, you just got anti-mage? This this is the ultra kill, and this could be 
This looks like the end of Orange Esports' run in, in the upper bracket here for the Dota 2 Super League. They won't be out of it, but the road gets harder from here, and I believe they will drop down to face LGD International in their next match if they go on to lose this game. And frankly, Winter, just the way the game is developed, it starts to feel a bit hopeless for Orange. Even though new statistically they're not out of it, strategically maybe they have a shot. It's just LGD being able to play and control heroes with this type of composition so well. It just feels like LGD are out executing Orange more than anything else. Oh, no, it's going to be oh, a blink no. in by Xiao Wei. Now a disruption. A soul catcher from Net tries to turn this one around. He does catch Xiao Wei. No, a blink in from Mushi. Catches out two with the burrow, but a back back in to a lot of damage from the macro pyre. LGD, will they give chase? Will they settle for the Rex? They purge Silar, and now LGD, they beat Ru him. Rubik has re um. <laughs> Wow. That's actually pretty cute. You can constantly leave the enemy targets. That's actually seven. pretty amazing, if you really think <laughs> about it. Wow. It's going to be funny. Because be he can force staff his team off fight, he can lift off fight, and everything else is very inconsequential. He, he just needs a bloodstone with this skill. This guy is doing a lot of extra bench presses, that's what I'll say. He is lifting overtime this game, DDC. The way this game is developing, it's it's so easy for LGD to find the picks because Xiaowei just jumps in with Carapace and he just goes on somebody and they die. Yeah, and it's also because of the the way they execute the vacuum ice puff. I think pretty much every single time they do it perfectly. Every fight. They were even doing vacuum uh, impales earlier this game, which is not yeah. a combo you normally see. Ice pass is a lot easier to hit. Yeah, ice puff is a lot easier. <laughs> I gotta agree with you. Well, at least we can agree about something here. <laughs> smoke. Desperation. Smoke time. Director 8 again. No. They're looking to catch him out. The trap will drop mid. Ohio. Demon edge up. He's going for some damage items. Now KYXY from the left side. He'll go for a flank. Oh, and Epi. Really? Burrow catches three. Is it going to matter though? DDC. Ghost Scepter is there. Ohio now surrounded. He's in trouble. Trying to man fight it out. But Mushi waiting for that BKB of Silas to wear off on the other side of the fight. The Extinct's going to erupt. They got the perfect initiation, but they still couldn't kill even one hero. And Silar still is Aegis, and he might go back in now. The blink, and then the stun from Xiaowei. They catch okay with oh. XY. That's a mana void. That is going to leave a mark. And now he's on the sidelines. Net soon to follow, most likely. Mushi isolated, brought down in a hurry. Two more slices, down he'll oh, go, and they're not G done yet. G G this ID. is the end for RNG Sports. Xiaowei, body blocking Net, trying to finish him off. And with the Iron Shell there, they'll do it. Four heroes dead, triple kill for Silar, and they end this game with an exclamation point. They're going to put a feather I'm, in their I'm caps. I'm scratching my head in this video now. And RG Sports, to beat this two, team? two games in a row. They win the laning stage, and they lose they, the game. They didn't play badly at all. It's just that... Oh. LGD just out-executed them. It's, again, it's the mid-game and the late game where they, they just outplayed Orange. No, I, I blame you. You jinxed them. <laughs> I, I, the jinx was going both ways. I also jinxed Xiao 8, but unfortunately it wasn't good enough. I'll admit, I was, I was rooting for RG Sports a little, just a tiny bit this game. But LGD, you got to give them credit. They played fantastically well, and they deserve the win. They're the, be they're the better team. And I feel like for Orange, sometimes they just don't play as a team. In the team fights, it seems like they're not on the same page. Players getting picked off. The movements aren't quite there. And I say this. They're a fantastic, it, it, the talent on Orange is as good as any other team in the world and right up there I'd say top three to five at least, but the teamwork sometimes does feel lackey winter. It feels like they're maybe not all on the same page. Oh uh, well, it's really, you have to play perfectly to beat this team. That being said, it is LGD and I, credit where credit's due. They played fantastically. Of course, he is winter guys. You should definitely follow and support him. He's the captain of MUFC. They're going to the International 3. We'll be seeing more of them in the Alienware Cup, which continues in two days' time. You'll be wrapping up your group stage winter. Thank you for joining me for the broadcast. Best of three, 2-0 victory for LGD China. They move forward. I believe we'll be playing the either DK or LGD China. I'm not 100% sure. We'll try and figure that out later for you guys. We'll make a Facebook post about it because the format is a little bit odd for the playoffs. But Winter, thank you for joining me. Any shout outs, any closing words, wisdom for the viewers out there? LGD is the bomb, man. <laughs> LGD is a fantastic team. And of course, Winter, you're a fantastic caster. Thank you for joining me. Twitch.tv slash Winter. Uh, and of course, Twitter.com, Facebook.com slash Winter Dota. You guys should all follow him and support him. But for now, guys, that will conclude today's Dota 2 Super League action. If you missed it, we also did a cast of the LGD International 
Oh, we're, we're going to the camera shot, huh, Kawa? <laughs> I'm wearing this headset so I can hear Winter. We have earbuds, oh. but the, the, the core doesn't reach. And Kawa ignored my instructions not to show this hideous headset. But, uh, well, Winter, thanks for joining me. Uh, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's coverage. LGD International took down IG yesterday. They stay alive. As for LGD China versus Orange, LGD China will prevail. I'm just watching Kawa go like this on the sidelines. Uh, that concludes today's broadcast, though. I think I've said that like five times. But we're done. We'll have a rebroadcast coming up next for you guys. Tomorrow we will return with another day of Dota 2 Super League action. Once again, I'm LD. He's Winter. Thank you all very much for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow.